All right, so we're here for this third part of this little mini teaching series that I've called A Call to Consider. And we're at this last, uh, we're at this last part, and um, I spent the first two parts of this three-part series speaking really to my students, uh, really teaching and speaking to people who follow my ministry, alumni, uh, students directly connected to my ministry, podcast listeners, those who have been highly invested. Uh, I've been I've been speaking to that, but uh, now now I kind of and, and what I've let you do is I've kind of let you just like Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount would he he had crowds and he called the disciples to himself and he spoke to the disciples about the Beatitudes and the Sermon on the Mount, but the crowd got to listen in, they got a they got an eavesdrop they got a they got to overhear, and then they at the end were amazed by Jesus's teaching. I don't know if you're amazed by my teaching. That's not the point, but. That in the same way that Jesus called, I let you kind of listen in, eavesdrop as I talk to my students. You, you may have loved, you may have hated what you heard, that's fine. And yet you're here for part three, take it or leave it, right? And, and now I want to kind of turn my attention to the larger group, and my students kind of, kind of listen in and overhear, they're a part of it too, but I, I want to talk to all of us, the crowds, if you will. We, we, we've talked about prophets and priests and kings, and, and hopefully it's been clear that the invitation is for all of us to consider, not just my students, not just me, all of you. All of you to consider, we've all been called to make an impact on the world. We've all been called to partner with God. We've all been called to be leaders or influencers of some kind in the world. We're all called to be a part of that. And so, uh, there's an invitation for you to consider about prophet, priest, king. Which Who are you more like? I'm not sure we're all one of the three. That's not my point. My point is not to figure out, I'm a priest and here's the... To think in broad generalities, to think in word pictures. I really resonate with the call of a king. I really resonate with the call of a prophet. And, and here's what that means. And here's what I can learn. And here's what I bring to the conversation. And, and here's why... Uh, it's a it's a benefit to others, and here's what I have to add. But but here's why I struggle with other people, and why their leadership seems to make mine bristle. And and what so we talked about that. And then in the last teaching, we talked about how we all have a a, ple, a a piece of ground. We all have a plot of land that God has called us to steward. And, and God says, "Do not move the ancient boundary stones." We need to make sure that we're being true to our field and stewarding our field appropriately, but never stealing from somebody else what God has called them to steward, but instead being confident in our call and also helping them be confident and accomplish what their call is. We, we talked about all that. And, and in the last video, I kind of hinted at a lot of things that I'm sure for many of you, um, just you you weren't on board with. I, I insinuated that there's, uh, on some level, we're dealing with some systemic injustice in our country. And I suggested that part of that was, was, was racial injustice. And I meant that. And that's what's on the forefront of my mind. And, and yet I know in the evangelical world right now, we are so torn over everything. Everything from mask wearing to COVID to election year to racial injustice, Black Lives Matter. We're so torn. I don't want any part of that. I do want to be a part of bringing shalom and wholeness to the world. I, I do want to be a part of pursuing justice because our God is a God who pursues what we've talked about on the podcast, mishpat, restorative, redemptive justice, putting the world back together, being aware of how power dynamics and systems of imperial domination have crushed certain people groups and certain experiences. I, I won't be getting into this organization or that organization or this hashtag. You need to know that I, I'm not in this because uh, I've been influenced by the communi communist agenda. You need to know that I don't get my information from CNN. Fox News is not the people who inform me. 
I don't let a political party do my thinking for me. I don't let a hashtag tell me what I ought. I try to pay attention to all these things because I like to know where the world is at and what the different conversations are. And I want to be aware of how the kingdom of God is interacting with what the kingdom of this world is doing. So I try to listen to all of it. I try to be very aware, but you, you need to know, I, I, I don't, I don't bow the knee to any political party. There's no social agenda. There's no socialist Marxist worldview that I'm, I'm so tired of being put in a box by one group of people or another group of people. Uh, wait, Marty, why are you being like this? Why are you, why are you being so hard to talk to and so many disclaimers and in the rest of this video, uh, there's going to be some moments where I try to really confront us and, and really call us and challenge us to think. And at different points in the video, I'm sure uh, different groups of people will be less comfortable with what I'm trying to say. Um, so why am I being like this? Well, part of the reason, unfortunately, is that we've proven yet again on another election cycle, and it seems to get worse and worse and worse every cycle uh, in my lifetime anyway. But we've proven again that we are, we seem to be incapable of having rational dialogue, being respectful human beings, Social media has made us, social media has made us animals, and it's incredibly frustrating to watch. Um, but uh, we, we, re, we, we refuse to be able to engage critical, we prove our inability to engage critical thinking. We, we have decided that there's, uh, there's, there are, there's constantly only two boxes. We have these, bi we have binary groups. There's only two groups. You're either in this group or in your ear in this group. You're either in the winner's group or the loser's group. I'm either for you or I'm against you. And there's no dialogue, there's no listening, and there's no understanding that happens between the groups. It's completely 100% anti-kingdom and anti-gospel. Because the gospel was it, it stood completely opposed to that. Um, and, and so it's frustrating because... Uh, on the conservative side, I have people that refuse to engage this topic because they've decided that this topic belongs in a particular box. It's driven by particular motives and organizations and agendas, and, and there will be no listening. There will be no, there will only be informing. They will inform me uh, what this is and what this isn't. On the other side, I have all my progressive friends, which use this as the litmus test. You either operate this way, you say these things, you show up and do X, Y, and Z, or you are obviously uh, not for goodness and truth and justice and wholeness. So both groups uh, show and demonstrate an inability to, to engage this content. And we need to rise above that. This video is partially a call for us to, to do better. We, we have to do better. You can do better. I can do better. We can do better. I mean, this is, Jesus ended up having this. Uh, he was confronted one day about a very political issue. Somebody, uh, two different groups came to him. Two groups uh, were told that, that Pharisees and Herodians were working together, like two opposing worldviews, like they'd never worked together. And yet this time on this day, they came together to confront Jesus. And they, they, they had this question about, should we pay tribute? And it wasn't about taxes. It was about tribute is the actual better translation there. Should we pay tribute? There was a particular coin um, that you had to buy in the Roman Empire to pay tribute uh, to Caesar. And they wanted to know, Jesus, do we pay tribute? And for them, this was a binary issue. There was two options. And whatever option Jesus chooses, he's going to make one of the groups his friend and the other group his enemy. And they're trying to force him into this binary worldview where there are only two options. What Jesus does is he takes this coin and we're told that he asks the crowd, whose image and whose inscription is on the coin? Well, on the coin is the image of Caesar. And on the coin is also an inscription that says different things at different points in history. The, our best guess about this coin at this point in history is that it said the worshipped son of a worshipped God. Caesar was the worshipped son of a worshipped God. 
So, so the, the inscription is blasphemous. It was considered idolatry to the religious Jewish world that Jesus was living in. And so Jesus takes the coin and he says, well, whose image and whose inscription is on the coin? And they said, well, it's Caesar's. It's Caesar's image and it's Caesar's inscription. And Jesus says, well, then render, give back, give back to Caesar what's Caesar's. So, so give him his coin. If he wants his coin, give him his coin. It's his coin. Give it to him. Pay the tribute. But don't you dare engage in the worship. Don't you dare engage in the worship. So Jesus refuses to be forced into these two binary positions of you're either anti-tribute, anti-Caesar, or pro-tribute, pro-Caesar, pro-Rome, anti-Rome, patriot, whatever. Like he refused to be put into these boxes. He refused to engage in the stupid kind of Facebook meme, social media nonsense that seems to drive our world, even in the church of Jesus Christ. They, he, he invited us to think more. He invited us to be better. He invited us to be a part of a different conversation. I, I find that to be a great teaching point for where we're at today. So back to what we were talking about. Here's what I know. I know that there are some that have for some time been crying out in our world, in our culture, about what they say is mistreatment. I, I didn't go to the news outlets to find out if that was true. I didn't, I didn't read a blogger to decide what was accurate. I didn't jump on the internet I heard people talking about racial injustice, about the dangers of white supremacy and, and even systems of white privilege and where they exist. And I, and I didn't go to Twitter to find out more. I, I guess I did, but what mattered to me was I, I went inside myself. I started to reflect on what was true inside of me. And I found over these last handful of years, not just this year, not just this election cycle nonsense, not, not just that, but for a while now I've been looking inside and I've, I've realized there's a lot of things in there that have no business being there. They're not of God, they're, they're sin. I've learned that racism does live inside of me. It does. I've learned that I am a part of systems that work for me because of the color of my skin or my gender, and they don't work in the same way for others. I don't know about this organization and that organization and whether this hashtag or that thing is anti-family or... It's not, I'm not here to talk about that. What I'm here to talk about is we have things in our world that the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ, calls us to address, especially in the kingdom of God. And so I want to learn more about that. And I want to look around at the things that are in my field, my field, not your field and your field. I don't know about that organization or this thing or what. I have looked inside myself and I have looked inside the field that I am responsible for, the organizations that I lead, the ministries that I'm a part of, the churches that I worship in. That is what I'm concerned, the things that I am responsible for. And I want to do that in a way that models for people that have fields next to me. Because somebody else is farming their field next to me and somebody else over there and, and everybody's slightly different and there's nuances and complexities. But I want to deal with disorder and empire and sin and rebellion wherever it shows up in my life and my heart or my field. And if we all do that together, well, we'll be a part of the solution. So I wanted to talk to you about uh, two things. One is just something that I'm mulling over, and I just want to share with you. I'm not telling you your business. 
I'll probably be disabling comments on this video if I can, because I am not going to get into it. I, I will not get into the rubbish. <laughs> and I don't, I don't have to entertain everybody's nonsense in the comments thread. That's not what this is about. And, and you don't have to subscribe to my videos. That's totally fine. You don't have to listen to my podcast. You, you can just move on. You don't have to send me an email. You can literally just move on. I, I'm not telling you this is it. I'm not telling you I'm right. I'm not telling you you're wrong. I'm just vulnerably leading, considering, thinking out loud, and trying to be a leader of integrity and of character that models the gospel of Jesus Christ in this world. So, for years... I have never voted. I've never voted. Mainly because I always saw, and everybody, please don't get angry at me. It's just been where I'm at. Uh, I want to be about the kingdom of God. I don't, I don't want to be a great patriot. I want to be a great disciple. And I do love a lot of the things that come with this country, but I'm also not interested in trying to fix the world through imperial means. There's empire and there's shalom. There's the kingdom of this world and there's the kingdom of God, and they don't necessarily go together, at least not in the way that I'm talking about it. And so I never wanted to, I never voted because I never wanted to be a part of trying to use imperial methods to bring about a, a, theolo a theological reality or a kingdom of God reality. I never wanted to use the kingdom of this world to try to accomplish kingdom of God ends. I wanted to use the means of God to accomplish the ends of God. So I never voted. I've never been a part of that. And, um, and through this whole little journey and discovery I've been on for really about the last three, four years, a very intentional self journey of just self-examination where I've learned how much I was just handed as a person, whether it was the color of my skin or the systems that served me well or just the things that I have access to that a whole other portion of the world doesn't have access to. Uh, there's an inequality that I've been a part of. And, and somebody pointed out to me that my ability to just not vote was actually a part of the fact that I could, I could live in a world and not vote and it really wouldn't impact me a whole lot. And yet there are others in the world. I'm not going to tell you this group or that group or whatever. I'm not, I'm not here to tell you. I'm not here to tell you that. But there are others in the world who don't have that luxury. Like so much of their life depends on their votes depends on the people that we elect. I've learned a lot about that. It's made me it's made me think a lot about a new way to vote. And so I want I want to just give you something to consider. Something something to consider. I, I think as Christians, as people who follow Jesus, who believe in the radical gospel and the radical theology espoused in the New Testament, I I think we ought to be people who vote differently. Now that's your business. So I'm just, I, I'm just giving you a call to consider is what I've called this series. What if we went to the polls this year and used our vote, not for myself, because that's the American way, right? My vote is my voice. My vote is my, to put my convictions and my passions on the ballot. It's a great American position. What does it mean to vote as a disciple of Jesus? And so I, here's how I'll be voting this year, and I want to challenge other people to consider this same thing. What if we went to the ballot box this year and voted for somebody else? Whoever that somebody needs to be. I'm not telling you which party. I'm not telling you what the group is. But instead of voting for me, and what I want, what if everybody went to the ballot box and said, what is the group that I believe needs my voice the most? What is the group in our world that needs our, my voice the most? I'm going to use my voice, my vote for that group.
I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm the only one that will do that this year. It's what, but it, but it is why I'll be going to the ballot box this year for the first time ever in my life. I'll be I'll be casting a vote, and I won't be casting a vote for me. I'll be casting a vote for somebody else. And I, you choose. You choose. I, you choose which vote and which party and which philosophy is going to serve that group the best. But do it honestly, please. Do it honestly. I know we all have our Facebook memes and we all talk about like, well, of course this philosophy is best for that group. And yeah, no, 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 no. I'm not talking about using the vote that you would have already used for yourself with your own self-righteous opinion for that other group of people. Like I can imagine a whole group of us going, well, I'm going to use my vote for the unborn. Okay. That's, yeah. However, if you're just doing that because that was always your position in the first place and that's really not a vote for somebody else, it's actually just a vote for you, then we may be missing what I'm suggesting. And maybe I'm wrong. So ignore it. Who is the people? Who is the group of people? Who is the demographic? Who is that needs our vote the most? And which vote doesn't preserve my world doesn't preserve the kingdom of God for me, but what is the vote that brings the kingdom of God for them? What does that potentially look like? I, I don't know. It's a crazy idea. I, I've thought it through for a long time. This is the first time I've actually put it to words out loud on a camera, and I'm crazy enough that I'm going to put it on YouTube. I'm going to disable the comments if I can. If I can find out a way to disable the comments, there will be no comments on this video. I'm, not, I'm, just, I'm just not interested. Please. Do not send me your emails. You can di just disagree with me and just move on. Just fine. Just ignore it. <laughs> then just please don't share the video. That's fine. I, I, I want to I lay down my life and follow Jesus. I want to take up my cross, which is I want to I want to I want to engage in self-sacrifice. I want to lay down myself and follow Jesus. I want to consider, as Paul says, Consider others as more important than myself. Uh oh, I'm back. Uh, you know, I wanted to I wanted to actually pause here because I, I don't want to go past this moment. Like this isn't a crazy radical idea. Like this is the radical, scandalous nature of of New Testament theology. Like we we are commanded to do. Like I just want to read this. We are commanded to think this way. This isn't a crazy idea. Crazy suggestion. I want to read. I want to read that passage out of Philippians. Like we need to hear this. I invite you to hear this. Listen. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from His love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love being one in spirit and purpose. And does that, describe, does that describe us today in our world during an election year? Being of one mind and of one purpose as followers of Jesus? Do nothing. God, I'm going to get worked up. I'm going to start preaching here. Listen to this. Do nothing from selfish ambition. Nothing. Not even your political persuasions. Not even, not even the way that you vote. Do nothing. Do nothing out of selfish ambition. Nothing out of selfish ambition. Or vain conceit. Sure describes what I see all over social media in the name of Jesus these days. Vain conceit. Oh. And, and God save me from these same things. I, I, I pray that I would... When I win, not if, when I fall prey to these same temptations. Rescue, rescue me. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility, consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not to your own interests, Do nothing out of self, selfish ambition. Nothing. 
You should not look to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Maybe we should bring Philippians 2, 1 through 5 to the voting booth with us this year. Each of you should not should look not only, and not only, so it doesn't tell you to not look to your own interests, but not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same of Christ Jesus. And in case we need a reminder, here's the reminder. Who, being in the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very uh, nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, because he did those things, because he humbled himself, because he emptied himself, because he took on the form of a servant. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We love to use that passage as like this triumphant, there will come a day when every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess because he will be triumphant and we will be triumphant. Listen to me, that passage is saying the exact opposite because Jesus emptied himself, because he knew how to die. The full extent of dying to himself because he became obedient to death, even death on the Christ cross, because he refused to seize right-handed power. That's why he was exalted. That's why every knee will one day bow. Because of his self-sacrificial love for everybody and everybody. And we're invited. Our invitation was to be like Christ, to put on the same mind of Christ, to do nothing out of selfish ambition. May we let Philippians 2 instruct us for where we're at in these difficult times. But back to where we were. I want to use, I want to be hospitable and generous. I want to use the power and the influence that I have for others. This seems like very kingdom-oriented things to do. This seems like very Old Testament, New Testament, early church, work of, uh, of Christian theology. This seems very consistent to me. I want to use my and and you know your heart you know you know what i'm talking about and you can take my words and twist them and feel really self righteous and really good about what you're doing and if that's where you're at you're probably complete i don't care if you're progressive conservative i don't care where you're landing if that's where you're at if you're just like well yeah i know exactly what that looks like then you probably have no idea what what, what that looks like if this doesn't come with some kind of like gut ache some consideration of the other. If you're not truly considering what it looks like to love your enemy, then you don't get it. If this election year is about you and your tribe and your power and your worldview, then I, then I fear that you may care more about a political party than you do the kingdom of God. Because the kingdom of God is always going to be about the other. It's always going to be about the Eucharist table where, eat, where people, where no Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, Republican nor Democrat, we, but we all are one in Christ Jesus and we all gather around and we're all about bringing shalom to chaos. You you may still end up casting the exact same vote that, that you would have. I'm inviting us to change our hearts. I'm inviting us to farm our fields. I'm inviting us to care about our neighbor. I'm inviting us to not move boundary stones. Maybe I'm crazy. If I am, Move along. But before you do, I want to ask you to consider one last thing. Uh, we're going to start something new here at Impact Campus Ministries. 
and I, I, I've wanted to be really aware of, I have become aware of how, I, how, how easily I say things that are unintentionally damaging, but they're really destructive. I, I say things that are loaded with all kinds of... And so I, I actually have a prepared statement here that I, I've had other people help me craft, other friends and colleagues and mentors and, and students and friends. They helped me create something so that it's not just me, but it's all of us. Or at least more of us. Maybe not all of us, but it's more of us and less of me. And I want to read it, and I want to invite you to be a part of this. Um, Impact Campus Ministries. I'm the president of Impact Campus Ministries. It's my job. It's the organization that I, that I lead. It's my field. It's at least part of what my field looks like. Impact Campus Ministries is engaging some new ideas to grow in our awareness and response to racial injustice in our world. Most importantly, we have been learning about these problems in our own organization and trying to address them to the best of our ability, knowing that we will continue to need to learn and that this will be a long journey, a marathon, not a sprint. At the same time, we'd like to address things that we are learning about and not simply think or talk about them, we are going to do our best to act when appropriate. As we have considered these things, we have learned that our support-based form of fundraising is not accessible for many individuals, especially for black indigenous people of color who are working against complex systems of oppression. As an organization, we want to support black indigenous peoples of color by working to break down these systems of oppression that have kept people of color in marginalized positions and instead provide a level playing field for those who wish to pursue a career in ministry. We have mourned that we don't have more black indigenous people of color in our organization, but recognize that the systems we use propagate this reality. We are actively working to change this. And one way we are enacting change is to raise money for a grant that will be used to employ black indigenous people of color in our organization and in the world of campus ministry as a whole. As the Lord provides, we will use every dollar of this money to promote diversity within the organization, and to combat systems of oppression that have pervaded organizations like ours for years, even unintentionally. We intend to give black indigenous people of color access to positions of leadership and create a path so that they can join us in the work of campus ministry. We are facilitating their thriving as much as we learn how to do so. Will you... Help us in these efforts. If you will make a donation to our Impact BIPOC grant, BIPOC is an acronym, Black Indigenous People of Color. If you will make a donation to our Impact BIPOC grant, we will use all this money to facilitate the sustainable employment of Black Indigenous People of Color in places of leadership. Our hope is is that this might model a positive way for organizations and companies to become more aware of systemic injustice in their own organizations and work to make the world a better place for everyone. That's where I'm at. I'm not claiming a hashtag. I'm not planting my flag on this political agenda or that thing. I'm not a part of this organization or that. I'm not. What I'm saying is that I am taking an honest look at what we are experiencing and what we're doing that's contributing to the problem. I'm not making grandiose statements about how this worldview is right and all this stuff. So Marty, you're signing up for Black Lives Matter. All I'm saying is that I want to be a part of a solution. And I have friends of color that have graciously shared their stories. And I'm learning because I'm trying to listen. 
And I know it's complex. And I know that there are nuances that matter. And I know that there are some of you that have concerns. And I, I know that there are actually even some valid things to hear and consider. I'm not disregarding that. But there are some things that are wrong. And I am not afraid to try to fix those things. Even if it makes some of us uncomfortable. Because I want to be a leader that has character. And I want to pursue justice and righteousness. And I've had prophets speak into my life and tell me it's time for me to lead. And I want to lead. So no, I'm not planting my flag and pulling all my water from this pool and I, I'm not influenced by this agenda and I haven't signed up for that thing. Calm down. We need to rise above. We need to be able to do our own critical thinking. And that whole thing may not be for you. That's fine. But totally ignoring or totally working against we want to invite you to join what hopefully is a well-grounded honest critical evaluation of where we're at we're not telling everybody else what to do we're trying to take care of our field will you help us if you will, get out there and vote. And do it in a different kind of way. And if, if you have some opportunity to share, if you have a little bit of extra, and you'd like to use it to help us address some things that we feel like are just not right in our field, just our field, we could use your help. And if you want to give to that grant, we'll put that link in the description of this video. You can go to that grant, you can donate to that BIPOC, Impact BIPOC grant, and we'll do what we can to start making at least our field more shalom, more gospel-based, more diverse, more whole, more representative of the full image of God seen in all of us. So help us. And come along for the ride. And... Tell your own stories as well. Together, we can make a difference. Let's go be the church, not at her worst, but let's go be the church at her best. Thank you.